Let's get back in the kitchen. Time for some comfort food. Time to get something really nice and tasty and hot and scrummy into your tummies. So today I'm going to show you something which generally a lot of people don't like to cook because they get kind of intimidated because it's one of those recipes where you often have to do a lot of prep work, a lot of fiddly chopping and doing things like that. And today I'm going to show you a pantry friendly version using just a few things from the kitchen cupboard. You can make something that's just as good, but not necessarily as complicated. I'm going to show you my pantry friendly easy beef lasagna today on The One Pot Chef. Right, let's get started. First things first, we're going to do the beef sauce. Now, basically all we're doing is creating a normal spaghetti sauce, but we're going to be adding a lot more liquid to it because the liquid is what's going to cook the lasagna sheets. Because I am using dry lasagna sheets because, again, pantry classic. So first things first, I've got one medium brown onion, which I'm just going to toss into the big pot. And you know something's good when I'm using the big pot. So one onion, roughly diced. We're also going to add a couple of teaspoons, heaped teaspoons, of minced garlic. Now, that's about two cloves or so, if you're using fresh. Again, as I said, this is a sort of a pantry version of this, so I like to use my jar of garlic. I like to use little shortcuts because it makes it a lot easier in the end. So basically, all we're gonna do is we put a bit of olive oil in here and we're going to just Basically stir this around, heat it up slowly, allow the onions to soften for a couple of minutes and then we shall move on. Beef. Now I'm using some fairly lean ground beef, beef mince. So I'm just going to toss that straight in. About 500 grams, half a kilogram. We're going to, just using the wooden spoon, we're just going to break it up and mix it through until it's nice and brown. Our uh, beef's brown up very nicely. Now here's where we get into our pantry classics. Firstly, we're going to put one tin or one can of diced tomatoes. Another little time saver and a real big flavour boost is just one jar of just plain spaghetti tomato sauce, like a pasta sauce or whatever. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. I'm just using a generic brand. So mix that through. A little bit of dried Italian herb mix. So just toss that in. I'm also going to add a good slosh, and that's probably the most inaccurate description of a measurement ever. A good slosh, probably a couple of tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Now we're going to turn it into lasagna sauce. First things first, we need some stock. Now you don't need to go and use real stock. You can use powdered if you wish. Basically, we're just adding liquid. I'm using some vegetable stock, one litre, and I'm just gonna pour that straight in. Now, as you can see, we've gone from having a spaghetti sauce to almost like a spaghetti soup type thing. That's what we're looking for. See, all this excess liquid is gonna get sucked up by the lasagna sheets and make the lasagna cook wonderful. Now, that's pretty much this section done. All we need to do is allow this to simmer for about 10-15 minutes or so on a very low heat. We'll set that aside. Next we're going to make our bechamel cheese sauce. Now the first trick you need to know about bechamel sauce is once you start making it, you need to keep making it. You can't stop and pause because you can ruin it if you sort of don't pay attention to it. Now as you can see I've just melted about 50 grams of butter in this saucepan until it starts to go a bit frothy. Now to that I'm going to add half a cup of flour. I'm just going to mix that through until the butter and the flour are combined and it becomes this sort of yellow paste. Sort of until it's all sort of combined there. Here we go. So it looks kind of like that. Sort of just a sort of yellow, almost Play-Doh looking sort of stuff. Doesn't look very appetizing at the moment I know. Now over a medium heat we're just going to Stir this about and allow it to cook for about one to two minutes. Now we're adding one liter of milk, but we're adding a small amount at a time. Just a little dribble. We're going to mix it through until it's completely combined with that flour and butter mixture. 
So it goes fairly thick, fairly quickly. Once it's absorbed, we add a little bit more. So all our milk is now added. As you can see, it's a very liquid, almost cream-like consistency. So all we need to do is keep it on the heat. We've got it just over medium. We're just gonna slowly stir this for about five to eight minutes or until it's gone nice and thick. Now, as I said before, once you start, you mustn't stop, so you've got to keep stirring. Well, it's been about five minutes, and as you can see, our milky sauce has now turned into this slightly thickened, creamy, smooth, voluptuous sauce. Voluptuous? I don't know why I'm saying voluptuous so much. Very velvety. That's probably a better V word. But yeah, so we're just turning off the heat, take it off the burner, and we're going to just add a couple of little ingredients. Now, working quickly, we're going to add one beaten egg into this mixture and stir it through. You've got to stir it through very quickly, otherwise the egg will just turn into scrambled eggs all through it. So, quickly mixing it through. There we go. No scrambled eggs for the one pot chef did it. That looks very good. We've got this lovely creamy thick sauce. It looks amazing. And we're going to add about two cups of sh uh, shredded cheese or grated cheese. I'm using Tasty. I find it's that universal cheese that's great for baking. So just mix that through until it's melted through it. So with our beautiful spaghetti lasagna liquid sauce, we're going to add a small amount to the bottom, a couple of ladlefuls. As you can see, there's quite a bit of meat in that, so this is going to be very, very tasty. So there you go. Just basically, we're putting a layer on the bottom there, and using some dry lasagna sheets, just trying to think what they were called there for a second, we're just going to layer them in, now, of course, every baking dish is a different size, so it will be different depending on what kind of one you've got, so don't worry about the pattern so much. Essentially, we just create a layer of sauce, then pasta, then sauce, then pasta, and you basically go until you fill the dish, until it's about maybe about a centimeter or half an inch at the top, make sure, making sure your final layer is the sauce. Then, we're gonna add the bechamel sauce on top. We're just gonna ladle this over the top there we go now it doesn't matter if it doesn't absolutely cover every square inch because as the liquid in the beef sauce evaporates and gets sucked into the pasta the bechamel will actually spread over the top so that's looking pretty good there, is I'm just going to add a touch more of that grated cheese on top. Lovely. Oops, guys. Once again, the One Pot Chef's making a bloody mess. <laughs> there we go. That's looking good. Now, all we need to do now is pop it into the oven, 200 degrees for about 50 minutes until the cheese on top has gone nice and golden brown and bubbling and all of the pasta is nicely cooked. And fresh out of the oven is our delicious lasagna. Absolutely fantastic. This couldn't be more perfect. You've got that lovely bechamel sauce, which is now spread all over the top and puffed up a bit. You've got cheese. You've got the lovely meat sauce, which is now integrated with the pasta underneath, and the pasta is sucked up all that extra sauce. This is absolutely incredible. All you need to do now is obviously slice it up. This will serve probably eight people, or at least eight servings. Serve with a bit of side salad, some crusty garlic bread, and you've got a dinner that everyone will absolutely love. See, this was just a really easy version of lasagna because you can, of course, do everything from scratch, but it takes ages and it's fiddly and it's complicated, and I think my version's a lot easier. So I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Check out my other videos at onepotchefshow.com. And until next time, see you later.